Today we're visiting with upland game biologist R.J. Gross and we're going to talk about the recent pheasant growing counts. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. RJ, tell our viewers, what is the pheasant crowing counts? Yep. So they're, they're predetermined 20 mile routes, um, spread out across the state. We have right over 100 of them. Um, we go out there and we run those three times between May 1st and June 10th, uh, try and spread it out. And it's run by game and fish staff, wardens, um, it, all hands on deck type of thing. And you do those, you go there, start at the first stop. There's 10 stops along those 20 miles. You get out of your truck, you listen for two minutes, and you count the number of pheasant crows that you hear. And you write, record that, come back, go to the next stop. And we do those three, three times so we can remove air. Um, you know, you want clear, calm mornings, you know, so you can hear those pheasants a couple miles away type of thing. And uh, it's, it's not a total population count. Uh, it's, it's just a, it's an index that we can use, compare year to year. You know, we've been doing it for 50, 60 years. So we have a pretty good data set. And uh, it's, it's about density, population density, and then overwinter survival of those roosters. RJ, give the results statewide and the, break it down to the four regions. Mm -hmm. Statewide, uh, compared to last year, it's relatively unchanged from last year. Still, um, you know, we had just a little bit 3% more than last year, you know, not significant. Um, then we break down the state into four, basically, pheasant management districts. Uh, starting the northwest um, is up just very slightly, about a crow per stop. Um, compared to last year, and you know, it's, we expected that just because we had good, you know, good winter. Most of the state didn't really have winter, um, very little snow, um, and they had good production there last year. So it was good, good up in the northwest, the northeast, which is not really traditional pheasant habitat. Uh, that was up a couple crows per stop. Um, you know, it, like I said, it's not really pheasant habitat. Most of the pheasants around there, down south in that in that district, down by I-94. Um, and they had you know decent production around there so it's good to see that in the southeast uh, they were up really similar to the northwest um, and they had good production last year too and not a very not a very tough winter so it's good to see that and then we only had one place that was that was down this year and that was the southwest you know where north dakota is kind of famous that's kind of our pheasant belt um, it wasn't down significant or anything like that just about a crow down as compared to last year um, you know, and they had a good winter. You know, it's kind of surprised, surprising to see that they were down. But, you know, that area did, they had uh, the worst of the cold snap in February where we had, you know, negative temperatures for two weeks straight. I mean, that'll take a toll on anything. And then also that's been the place where we've lost the most habitat acres. You know, just for example, CRP in the sign up last year, they didn't have 46,000 acres that wasn't re-enrolled in the program. And that's equivalent to 72 sections of land that could not be available for those pheasants anymore. RJ, what is this data used for? Yep, so like I said earlier, this, it's not a total population count, it's just it's an index. And it's, it's, a, it's a population density index and overwinter survival of, of those roosters. And we use that in combination with our brood surveys uh, to get a, a good fall outlook so we can you know, tell hunters and, and how it's going to be hunting if there's going to be a lot of young roosters in the population or not. RJ, I travel the state quite a bit. I see a lot of pheasants as I'm traveling. Uh, how are things looking during the nesting season and why am I seeing so many pheasants yep. on the roadsides? Yep, and then a lot of people have said that they've been seeing a lot of pheasants this year and you know even in in my travels and doing these crowing counts you see a lot of pheasants out and about and a lot of that you know we do have short memories you know I, when, when you look at it, it's usually pretty similar to the, the year before. Um, and, you know, in the springtime, those pheasants, they're out developing their territories, you know, getting their nest sites. So you see them more, more often, they're more visible. Um, currently, it's, it's, conditions are not very favorable for pheasants. You know, we're, we're having pretty good drought and some of the state is in, you know, exceptional drought, the worst category that the drought monitor has. And the problem with drought is when the chicks hatch, they, the first two weeks that they're alive, they eat exclusively insects. And when there's no moisture, no soil moisture in the drought, those insects just don't hatch, they don't complete their life cycle. And if there's limited food available, available for those chicks, it's gonna be a you know, low chance of survival for them. And then also, if, if the adults, if the drought gets bad enough, the hens will abandon nests and 
if their nest gets destroyed, there's a lower chance that they will re-nest. And if they do re-nest, it'll be, you know, instead of those 12 eggs that they lay, it'll be four, five, or six type of thing. So the pheasant crowing counts really isn't a good indication on how the fall hunting season's gonna be. Nope, nope, it, 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 is, it is a good index of the overwinter survival and density, but if you, we combo that with the um, late summer brood counts that we do, then it's a good fall predictor. So we'll see you in September, early October, and talk about how the pheasant season's gonna be. Yep, absolutely. A lot of great information, RJ, thank you. Thank you.